What's up, dudes, and welcome to Hindsight 2020, episode number two. This is a series where I talk about a Call of Duty game that I did not appreciate in its prime, but now years later, I go back and look on, and I do have a new appreciation for it. Each video is about one game in the franchise in particular, and the beginning of the video will talk about all the things that made me not like it when it was the current game, and then the second part of the video will be about why I go back now a couple of years later and realize that these games do actually have a lot of value for the Call of Duty franchise, and they weren't bad games at all. If you guys did happen to miss episode one, I will link it down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the subject of today's episode, which is about Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Just kicking things off here, I think that this one is definitely going to surprise a lot of you guys. I know in the last episode, I had you guys guess which games you thought I was going to talk about in future episodes, and I saw a lot of Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, and Infinite Warfare, but I did not see many people guessing Black Ops 3. But yes, Black Ops 3 is the next list in this game for me, so let's talk about it. I think a good place to start off talking about this would be by saying this. I did not mind Advanced Warfare. I thought Advanced Warfare was a ton of fun. I thought it was just the right change that Call of Duty needed. Even amongst the crowd that says Advanced Warfare was just okay, a lot of them will still say that the EXO movement was just a little too much, but I totally disagree. I thought the EXO movement was amazing. I thought it was very fun, very fast, and the maps were built for it, so why not? So as probably one of the few people that was satisfied with Advanced Warfare, I wasn't even thinking about the next COD game at this time. You know, I've kind of fallen in and out of the YouTube scene as a viewer over the years. I've entered and exited probably three or four times. And it was around this time I wasn't really watching YouTube. So like when Black Ops 3 was revealed and all that stuff, I didn't even know about it. I had just happened to hear about the beta through word of mouth, and it was an open beta that year. And if I'm not mistaken, it was actually the first beta that Call of Duty's had since World at War, so this beta was a really big deal. Naturally, I heard about the beta, and I played it, and I just remember one of the very first things I thought of when I started playing the game was, this is kind of weird. And it was pretty much this attitude that I kept for the game throughout its entire life cycle. Of course, I bought Black Ops 3. Of course, I buy, I buy every Call of Duty game. You know, I love Call of Duty no matter what it is. But I just could not shake this feeling of, like, thinking the game was weird. I just felt very indifferent to the game throughout its entire life cycle. One of the first things I remember thinking of is like, what is up with this movement? You know, why is this movement so dumbed down? Why can't I move as fast as I'm used to moving in Advanced Warfare? No dashing, you can't jump as high, you can adjust how high you jump. And I was like, well, why did they take away the biggest, you know, in quotes, innovation that they made in the last game and just kind of water it down like this? And that was the first and most immediate turnoff for me in the game. But of course I got used to it after a while and, you know, now I'm accustomed to it. But there were several other things that I just had a very hard time accepting. The setting of this game is just something that still to this day just it's mind-boggling. I don't understand why they, they took the series in this direction, right? You look at Black Ops 1 and you look at Black Ops 2 and you say, what happened between Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3? Why did they do this? Look at Black Ops 1. Look at what a badass game Black Ops 1 is, right? The Cold War. The Vietnam War, M16s, Hueys, chopper gunners, fighting in the jungle, Vietnam, Hanoi, President JFK, Fidel Castro, Cuba, Cuban Missile Crisis. Just the entire setting and period was one of the things that made the game so badass and so unique. Then you look at Black Ops 2 and it's a direct continuation of Black Ops 1. So you're playing as relatives and descendants of the main characters from Black Ops 1. There are a lot of references to Black Ops 1, lots of flashbacks. You're still fighting in believable places. You're fighting in Pakistan, you're fighting on US aircraft carriers. What I'm trying to get at is Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 1 were believable. The settings were just believable. They seemed like they could really happen in real life. And when I got to Black Ops 3, I just remember thinking like, what is this? You know, this is... It's not believable. It doesn't seem like this could really happen in real life. And that idea of being grounded in reality was one of the things that made me love all Call of Duty games before that so much. It's because they were all believable scenarios. But Black Ops 3 just didn't have that. Even Advanced Warfare, man. Yes, it had exosuits, but the characters and the setting still came off as relatable. They were still human beings fighting other human beings. The story was also amazing with Kevin Spacey. Black Ops 3, both the multiplayer and the campaign, just, I, I couldn't connect with it. There was nothing to relate to. It was just so far out there, and to be frank, I just thought the game was was pretty silly, honestly. This was the first game to have gestures and taunts at the end of games, and you gotta sit there and watch that, and they take so long to load, it's just ridiculous. And you're just like, this is dumb, man. Like, I, I feel, like, cringy even watching this, you know? The lines and the dialogue that the characters say to each other on the battlefield. Like, I, every time I hear Ruin say, holy crap, nice kills, I'm just like, ah, oh, stop, please, you're making me cringe, you know? <laughs> but a lot of these elements, the taunts and gestures, the quote, humor between specialists, the existence of specialists themselves, too. I thought that was really weird at first, but just the fact that they exist, they all have their own backstories and stuff, which is kind of cool in its own way, but honestly, I couldn't care less about that. And then, like, the really wacky camos and stuff, 
it just made me start to think like this is the first Call of Duty game that's designed for younger kids and that's pretty much where I've sat with it this entire time. So really I just kind of resented it because the Black Ops series went from this really cool real life badass thing to just like this little daycare kitty playtime type of setting. But here's the thing, here's kind of the irony in all this, right? I played this game all the way through. I played the shit out of this game. I did Prestige Master, I did Dark Matter Camo, and I have a lot of kills racked up. Lots of playtime in this game. Now let's talk about how I feel about the game today, after it's prime, after it's all said and done, after it's all over. I think, looking back now, I think what happened with me is that I was so busy reluctantly playing this game and wishing that it was something else that I just forgot to enjoy it for what it was while I was actually playing it. So I played it, but I wasn't really enjoying it. This is the game that got me back into the YouTube scene, believe it or not. This was the first time that I was really just hyper concerned about what is the next Call of Duty game going to be. Started searching all about Call of Duty 2016, I discovered Biblical Reaper and a bunch of other YouTubers that I used to watch back in the day, and I just started watching YouTube again because I was so concerned about what this next game was going to be like. All at the same time, while the clock is just ticking right before my eyes, and I'm not even paying attention to how good of a game Black Ops 3 is, you know? Now I see it when I go back and play it. The shooting mechanics are so good, the movement is so smooth and fluid, it's like, if you could just accept the setting, then it's gonna be one of the most fun games you could play in the entire series. And for reasons that I said earlier in the video, I just could not accept that setting at the time. And that prevented me from having fun while playing it. And those are some of the biggest reasons why, even though I played this game a lot, and I did have my share of fun on it here and there, although I have more fun on it now in 2018 than I did back in 2015, but they are the reasons that I look back on Black Ops 3 and I say, Wow, hindsight's 2020. So what do you all think? Honestly, I bet a lot of you guys are surprised by this. I bet you guys thought I was gonna talk about supply drops in this, but the truth is, Supply drops, even though they suck in this game, they're never gonna be a thing that makes or breaks a game for me personally. But I wanna know your thoughts. What did you think about Black Ops 3 when it came out? Did you love it immediately? Did you have to adjust to it? Or did you not realize how good it was until after it was out of its prime like me? I'm always interested to hear your thoughts and opinions, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up on it and be on the lookout for episode three of Hindsight's 2020 coming at you very soon here. I want you to guess what the next game is gonna be. You can look forward to that. If you're new, make sure you subscribe for more Call of Duty content from all titles, both current and past. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter so you can get stream updates for here on YouTube and over on Twitch. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.